Hello students, welcome to Short Obsess classes. So today we'll be solving a few questions from MA Economics 2014 question paper from Hyderabad Central University. So in the earlier video we solved up till question number 16. So from now on we'll solve the other questions like which will start from question number 17. So first I'll read out the question number 17 which goes like this. The capitalist form of circulation of commodities in the Marxian analysis is represented by four options are given so the right option is mc m dash so which is the option c that is first you start with money then for, with that money you buy you produce commodity and then you sell that that commodity with m dash so you buy with m and sell it with m dash so as a result you get this surplus from this so for question number 17 the right answer is C now we'll go to the next question which is question number 18 in the Marxian analysis of surplus value the surplus value is the working day of one labor supplies multiplied by the number of labor employed it gives like there are four options so the right option is mass of surplus which is A so in the Marxian analysis the surplus value the surplus value is the working days of one laborer supplies multiply by the number of laborers employed gives mass of surplus so now we'll go to the next question which is question number 19 an increase in the price of a commodity when demand is inelastic causes the total expenditure of consumer of this commodity to what happens when say for an example an increase in price of a commodity what happens to total expenditure total expenditure is basically price into quantity so when price increases now given the demand elasticity is inelastic that is the quantity change in quantity change in quantity and change in price which is elasticity is inelastic means less than one that is the change in quantity will be less than change in price if you take this here it will become change in quantity less than price so as price increases it is quite obvious the demand will fall now the change in demand that is the change in fall in demand is less than the increase in price so obviously as a result the consumers total expenditure will increase so for question number 19 the right answer is option a I'll explain it again that is the elasticity is given by So the elasticity is given by percentage change in quantity demanded divided by percentage change in price. Sorry, percentage change in price. It will be change in percentage change in price. Now when we call it inelastic, basically it means that it is less than 1. So now if you take this on the right hand side, then it will become percentage change in quantity demanded is less than percentage change in price. Now when a price of a commodity increase, so it is quite obvious by the law of demand we know the quantity demanded will fall. So when price of a commodity increase the quantity demanded falls. So as a result what happens that is his expenditure which is nothing but P into Q when P increases his Q falls now given this in elasticity assumption the change in Q that is fall in Q is less than increase in price so we would conclude that as a whole this term will increase so his expenditure of consumer to commodity increases so for question number 19 option A is the right answer so now we'll go to the question number 21 We'll come to question number 20 in a, another video. Now we'll go straight go to question number 21. Which of the following is not an assumption of theory of revealed preference? So there are various assumptions of theory of revealed preference. So which one among this are is not an assumption of revealed preference? So given as a cardinal measure of utility, obviously it is a assumption of revealed preference, consistency, it is a revealed preference assumption transitivity is also 
an assumption of reveal preference. Now there is another thing which is D. That is a consumer can be induced to purchase any basket of commodities if its price is made sufficiently attractive. So this assumption does not hold here. So for question number 21, the right answer is option D. So far we have solved question number 17, 18, 19, 20. I want you to go through it once. So I'll be giving you my number. If you have any query or doubts regarding this question, you can simply WhatsApp me on this number, which is 9836793076. So now we'll proceed further with the question number 22. So question number 22 is it is given that the cost that a firm incurs in purchasing or hiring any factor of production is considered as explicit cost so for question number 22 the cost of a firm incurs in purchasing or hiring any factor of production is referred to explicit cost so for question number 22 the right answer is option a that is explicit cost so for question number 22 the right option is option a that is explicit cost now we'll go to the question number 23 So in question number 23 it is given when alpha is equals to 3 by 4 and beta is equals to 1 by 4 for the Cobb Douglas production function returns to scalar all these things are given so we have to calculate so alpha plus beta is basically 1 so when alpha plus beta is equals to 1 if you simply sum these two values then you will get the value of alpha plus beta is equals to 1 so which is which says it is constant returns to scale so the value of alpha and beta says it is constant returns to scale so for 23 question number 23 the right answer is option a now we'll go to the question number 24 it says the best or optimal level of output for a perfectly competitive firm is given by points where so first i'll write down the I'll draw the diagram that is the price line in a competitive firm the firm is a price taker so the price line is given that is he has no choice over the price decision that is the market mechanism by this force decide whether the price will be here or somewhere else so it is MR equals to AR now the first condition for perfect competitions equilibrium is MR must cut MC so MR must cut MC so at these two points MR has cut MC now the second condition is that when MC is rising that will be the equilibrium so there are two points where MR MC cuts MR but at this point MC is rising so you would say this is the equilibrium point so here option D seems to be the right one that is the best of best optimal level of output for a perfect competitive firm is given by point where MR equals to MC and MC is rising. Now I'll come to the last question for this video that is and from this section as well that is when perfectly competitive firm and industry are both in long run equilibrium what these things happen so we know in long run this holds that is P equals to MR equals to MC SMC and LMC both cuts and also SSC goes from here so at point where perfect competitive firm and industry reaches equilibrium in the long run we get all of the above so in today's video we solved couple of questions so I'll go from here that is for question number 25 the right answer was D for question number 24 it was D for question number 23 it was A for question number 22 it was a for question number 21 it was D and for question number 19 it was A for question number 18 it was A and the question number 17 it was C so in today's video we solved couple of questions 1 2 3 4 5 6 
seven eight questions we solved in today's video in the subsequent videos we'll solve the other questions now we'll go to the section b we have almost completed all the questions from section a one or two questions are left which we'll do in an another video so i hope you guys got it so if you guys have any query or doubt you can simply whatsapp me on this number which is 9836793076 you can simply whatsapp me regarding your queries or doubt or you can also go to our website which is www showrobsersclasses.com there you will find a lot of other videos like this and you will also get to see a lot of other materials which are needed for MA economics exam by Hyderabad Central University so thank you for watching this video have a nice day ahead